Hey everyone, welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Our first story is, the credit card numbers are vanishing again. Fix your software. I've posted about this customer before. They're a chronic problem when it comes to credit card data security. The problem is that they use a credit card machine that isn't interfaced with our software because that would cost too much, or some excuse like that. We host their software, and because of that, we're very diligent in making sure credit card data can't be stored in our software. This customer is also very creative and keeps trying various fields and ways of typing the info to try to defeat our security measures. We recently rolled out an update with significant improvements to the detection of credit card data in various forms. Basically, the code searches for 15 or 16 digits within a certain range of characters, and if it passes a LUHN check, we then check if it matches any known issuers. If it does, then zap! We remove the numbers and replace them with a notice that they were removed and why entering credit card data like this is bad. Well, we got another call from this angry manager wanting to know why our software keeps making her credit card numbers vanish. Apparently it's a bug and we need to fix it. She even bragged that she figured out that if she typed the CC numbers on four different lines with an asterisk between each line, the numbers wouldn't get deleted. Until the update, that is. She was entering this into the guest notes section, which has a warning against this in large red letters. I wrote her a response telling her that while there wasn't a bug, we did improve the security of the software and she's seeing the results of it. I explained that it's for her safety as well as ours, since we both share liability if the data is compromised. Her response back to me was that it isn't a big deal, and if our servers are secure then there's nothing to worry about. It's just a small hotel after all. I can't wait to see what new method she figures out to store credit card numbers in plain sight. Woof, that's just a bad, bad idea. I don't understand why she thinks she needs to do that. If you really feel the need to store them, there's got to be better ways. But honestly, there just isn't a need. I know there's integrations you can do with a lot of credit card companies where you can access the customer data to do a sale or a charge or whatever. Um, if, if they're saved as a customer and you still never see the credit card number after that, but it can be authorized and charged. But yeah, I, I don't know, man. Some people just asking for trouble doing this kind of stuff. She'll get hers. And for our next story, how can you not have this board? A bit of backstory. I used to work technical reception. Not exactly sure how that translates. For a company that was selling pre-built PCs and PC parts and equipment. This was around 2009 or 10-ish. This is important later. People would come to our reception desk for warranty and non-warranty repairs. Normally, I was only allowed to do visual inspection of the device, enter it into our ticketing tool, print the form, and tell the customer to come back X days later or when his case engineer would call him. Now, the company has been in business since the mid-90s, and even since then, used a very particular serial number slash ID sticker for all pre-builds sold, which was still around when I worked there. Now on to the story. One late afternoon, in comes an elderly gentleman with his wife, and something that looked like a sewing machine with a cover on, under his arm. My colleague and I exchanged a very confused look, but asked him to come to the desk. In that cover was one of the first generation PCs our company has sold, Serial number ID sticker included. This thing was old, ancient even by 2009 standards. Either a Pentium 1 or some sort of 5x86 PC in pristine condition. I mean, there wasn't a speck of dust in that thing. Both my colleague and I were shocked how good it looked and that it was still functional. The reason the elderly gentleman has brought this fossil from a long forgotten era to us was because they just got FTTB and wanted to be able to go on the internet to chat with the offspring, and the thing was lacking a network card. The problem was, we weren't selling ISA cards since a few years now, and we couldn't help him. No other port option was available for this system. The gentleman was very outraged because he has bought this desktop PC from our company about 10 years ago, and he's still expecting us to service it. We tried to explain that due to its age, compatible parts were hard to come by. I mean, we had a few in sort of a parts museum we had laying around the reception area, but no stock. We explained that he might be able to purchase one through other means, not from our company, but he was adamant he has to buy it from us. 
He then began to explain that he is a retired train engineer, and no matter how old the locomotive was, you were always able to buy replacement parts for it, when needed. It took us two hours to try and make him understand that a locomotive is designed to function and be maintained for a significantly higher number of years than a PC. He still wouldn't yield. He left very upset and threatening that he will never buy from us ever again. <laughs> this was an exercise in frustration that left us sad, angry, and amused. Yeah, I know a couple people like that. I mean, I was like that with some equipment, but not really much computer equipment. I mean, to me, you know, it starts to slow down after, I mean, even after two or three years, that's, that's pretty much the limit for a lot of machines, depending on what you're doing. Uh, if he was just doing uh, basic word processing and things like that, eh, no big deal. But yeah, um, that's pushing it too far. And for our next story, pull the white cable. I'm not really IT. If anyone runs into problems, they come to me to see if I can solve it. And if not, I kick it over to the third party experts. Our third party server guy wanted to do a firmware update. So I fire up our console computer, but I got a connection issue. I let him know, and while he was still able to do the firmware update, he still wanted to investigate the connection issue. He had me take a picture of the back of the server where he focused on two cables that were blue and white. The blue one was our regular connection to the server, while the white one he connected to the console computer. He then had me pull the white cable. Cue a lot of yelling going on in the background in the office as their systems got disconnected from the system. As it turns out, the white cable was our regular connection while the blue one was for the console. On top of that, I didn't realize as we were dealing with all that, we accidentally pulled the power cable to our phone systems. So they went down as well. Needless to say, yesterday was not a fun day. Oof. So basically they're the same style cables and somebody just reversed the colors. Or somebody wrote it down wrong to begin with. That's the problem, you can never assume. That's why I like having little tag labels on the end of every cable. Uh, you know, in my home PC, it's not as big a deal, but when I set up stuff for my wife or my kids, I like to label the ends of the cables just in case. And for our next story, my only story is tech support for a major PC company. This is the only story I have from working as phone tech support for a major computer company. As most of us, calls that come in are pretty random. This particular call was nice and short. Gentleman called in because he couldn't get power to his computer it wouldn't turn on at all. According to our scripts, the first thing that we had everyone do in this situation is check all of the cable connections on the back of the tower and monitors. The gentleman tells me to hold for a moment. He had to grab a flashlight because the power in the office had been out all day. <laughs> I had to quickly put him on mute so I could laugh and groan at the same time. I don't know if it's a panic mood that people go into when power goes out and things like that. I mean, I've, I've seen people, actually, I worked in an office once outside of Philadelphia and uh, one of the salespeople was working on something on one of the computers and complained because he couldn't fire up his computer. He never asked when he came in from the road why we were all sitting in the dark. Uh, we had natural light from the windows, but I'm not sure why he didn't notice all the big fluorescent lights in the ceiling weren't on and uh, no phones were ringing, by the way because all of our phone systems ran through a powered rack and yeah so and nobody else was playing on their computers either because again no power people are amazing and our next story wrong cable so i'm sitting at home when i receive a text message on my personal phone and i have a company phone at 9 p.m when i work 8 a.m to 4 p.m about a monitor not working Apparently, this couldn't wait till morning. I'm neither in the position or make enough to work after hours, but fine. OP. Follow the cable from the working monitor back to the dock. What cable is it? End user. HDMI. OP. Okay, leave that alone. Now follow the cable of the one that's not working monitor. What cable is it? It should be a display cable. It has a yellow tape around it. End user. Uh, it's blue. OP. What do you mean it's blue? Send me a picture. OP. That's not the display cable. That cable allows you to use the USB ports on your monitor. I want you to remove every cable except for the power cable and display cable. End user. 
Now I have no monitors working. Long story short, they took the HDMI out and left it out. Add that to not listening to instructions with a COVID on the side. Yup, just like the other story, people don't pay attention, they don't follow directions, no attention to detail at all. It's amazing. You know, we don't expect the end user to be engineers or, you know, tech hardware experts or software experts, but you know, you'd think you'd know a little bit about your machine, like, you know, what works what. I mean, the guy doesn't, the person doesn't have an HDMI cable hooked to something at home, some kind of game console, DVD player, something. And for our next story, can you please read me the serial number? Such a simple request, which cost me two hours of my time. Working tech support for a hard drive company, we needed a name and serial number before we could help. It's an afterthought as even if out of warranty, we would still help and troubleshoot. First call comes in and it's one of those where you know the guy on the other end is always the one in charge. Even before I would tell them my name and where they called, they demanded my full attention. Boss voice who always knows people would follow states his hard drive isn't turning on. Fair enough. Normally it's an easy walkthrough to check. Now to the meat of the story. I do my normal hello after 10 minutes of the guy flailing words at me. I ask for a name. He makes heavy wording to make sure I add it in his info that he's a doctor. Oh boy. After getting his name down, I ask for the serial number of the hard drive. He's flabbergasted that such a thing could exist. After narrowing down his product, which is at this point 10 years old, we all memorize what each hard drive looked like and could figure it out by what it looked like. I finally got him to give me the serial number, but it was very odd. It seemed backwards. I asked if the unit was on, which got me a cancerous reply, no. After 30 more minutes explaining how to read it, he finally ever so slowly gave me the info that he sounded winded and in pain. I asked what might be the problem, and he explained his head hurt because he was standing on his head, leaning over his chair to read the information. <laughs> I kindly explained he can just flip the hard drive over, which again rewarded me with more nasty, I'm a doctor, smart, me no need help. <laughs> finally got the info after a total of 1 hour and 30 minutes. He had forgotten to plug it in since the last time he moved it. He was so happy he figured it out all by his own. Not. He was again complaining that he shouldn't have to stand on his head, which I explained I never requested this. He then spent the last 30 minutes explaining how important he was and demanded I search out his name. Yes sir, you are super important. The head surgeon in a very well known hospital. Two hours of my life to tell a man who made more money a year than I will ever make in my lifetime. Is it plugged in? My wife has a few clients who are PhDs and masters and all that. And, you know, they're very smart in their field. They're, they're brilliant in their field. But most of them I wouldn't trust across the street without somebody holding their hand. Common sense ain't so common, folks. And for our next story, imaginary issues call for imaginary solutions. This is a story from a couple of years ago when I was still doing tech support for a giant company. A ticket came in complaining about a monitor flickering. So I went to the warehouse, grabbed a new monitor from the shelves, and drove to the client's office. When I finally got there, the office was empty, so I decided to first check out the problem before unloading the heavy box and stood there in the office for five minutes trying to figure out which monitor was flickering. After a while, someone came in and asked me what I was doing there. User Sir, can I help you? Me. Yes, I'm from tech support and we got a ticket about a flickering monitor in this office. User. Oh yeah, it's the one on this desk. I'm looking at a dual monitor setup and not noticing anything wrong with it. There are two normal LED displays with no apparent issues. Me. I don't see any flickering right now. Did you move anything by any chance? User. Well, you don't see it when you look straight at it, but when you look out of the window, you can see it flickering from the corner of your eye. <sighs> at this point, I realize that the user will not let me go back without a fix. So I pull out a pair of display cables from my backpack and start changing out his VGA cables. 
All of our monitors have both VGA and display ports. Me. Just making this up as I go along. Uh, your cable is old. This newer version will fix this. While showing him that the new cable looks different than the old one. Afterwards, I put the VGA cables in the box of working VGA cables in our warehouse and closed the ticket. Sometimes you just need an imaginary fix for an imaginary problem. Yep, I agree, OP. Sometimes you just have to make them think that you're doing something productive for them, and they're fine. As long as there was either no problem to begin with or you actually fixed something, I don't see an issue with it. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me tonight, guys. If you enjoy this channel, do me a favor. Can you click like, subscribe, and maybe click that little bell icon so that you don't miss the fat guy with the beard telling you stories? Oh yeah, and if you go down into the description box, there's a link to our merch store. Hey, everybody wants an Uncle Reddit shirt, don't they? See ya.